Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Are you seeing, are you able to see my screen? Yes, yes. I do. Very good. So let's talk about system of system and complexity today. Just to understand, we talk about to model and design complex system, we need to understand what is a system of a system, what is a complex system, what is complexity. Allora, if technology will support me. It's afternoon in Genoa, not so dark yet. This season is pretty, it's a sunny day, and now a day. This is the view of the Genoa port by night. The old port, you can see on the upper right, the lighthouse, that is the Genoa symbol. You can see that is over here. I don't know if you see the mouse moving over. You can see a terminal container, you can see there is some social life over here, cinema, multiplex, uh, etc. There is some yacht, there is the aquarium and many stuff around. Now, over here, you can see there is a ship. Anna, do you see the ship? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Yes. The ship Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Very good, very good. Uh, yup. Okay, the ship, uh, as you can imagine, is some kind of complex system, no? because over a ship there is, for sure, propulsion system. If there is no propulsion, the ship they cannot move. There is a power system, generation, so power generation system, because for sure without power, it's very hard nowadays to operate. We have HVAC. Uh, HVAC is heating, air conditioning, air, air ventilation and conditioning. HVAC. No? Uh, that guarantee that we can guarantee temperature inside the ship, not only for the comfort of people, but even of the goods and the, of the equipment. No? Because if it's too cold or too hot, for instance, a computer on board can have a failure but obviously even for people on board. So you have many proportion systems. Now, I'm not really up to date, but once if I'm correct, there was around eight system on commercial ship and 12 system in military ships. The system could be weapon system that maybe include many subsystems. But in any case, this is a cargo, is a container carrier ship, and is in some way represent a part of an industry, the shipping and the complex system. If we look near to the ship, there are these big cranes that you can see that are taller than the ship. There are gantry cranes, we call normally seashore gantry crane or portainers. And these ones are part are produced by an industry that make EV equipment for ports. And even this, this is not complex as a ship, but in any case, it's a gadget that costs probably around several million euro or dollar if you prefer okay and there are several one i feel there are four then behind this big crane there are a little bit smaller cranes that are um, smaller but they still cost probably around over one million there are more and they even require strong part of automation if we put all together i have net uh, let me say a terminal, a port terminal, in this case a container terminal, but could be an oil terminal, other case could be a bulk terminal, general cargo, whatever, that make intermodal logistics. What means intermodal logistics? They arrive uh, trains, they arrive trucks from land, they arrive ships from sea, and they exchange, in this case, containers. So. This is another industry in the sector of logistics. Near to the plant, near to the terminal, there is a power plant. Nowadays, usually is the shutdown for pollution reasons because there are other sources. But in general, up to a couple of years ago, there was a power plant fully operating, several hundred megawatts of production that was producing energy partially for the town. Power plant in the sector of the industry. Inside the power plant, there was turbines that represent uh, complex 
systems, to steam turbines, sorry, can represent complex systems that are related to the industrial sector of plant engineering. That by themselves are just a part of the plant, but pretty sophisticated. Lighthouse, century ago, this lighthouse dates several centuries. Uh, was in the, up to, let me say, around uh, half a century ago, maybe just a little bit less, uh, a little bit more, sorry. The lighthouse was crucial for navigation because when you arrive near to the coast, lighthouse provide you by the flash, the stars, etc., the understanding what is the lighthouse that you see because each one has its own signature based on the light frequency, and you can understand where you are. By the way, even today with GPS, with all the other technological there are in case of malfunction of other systems, they could be pretty fundamental. Consider there are in, an immense number of ships sailing around, they still have some important meaning. This one is not very complex, but it requires power, uh, perfect synchronization of the lights, uh, all the control system, etc. All together, no terminal. This make is a poor terminal, and the different infrastructure part of the port and represent a kind of system integration. If we look down, we have this. Uh, there was cutlet. Magazzini del cotone, that means cotton warehouse. That, by the way, was uh, constructed under the supervision of my former um, professor of industrial plants at General University, Professor Meschinelli, that was a very talented engineer of, of the old generation. It was a old port warehouse that was completely restored and reconverted to become an exhibition center. There is possibility to organize exhibition inside. There is a multiplex with, uh, I don't know, 14, 15, 20 cinemas uh, ongoing concurrently. There are restaurants, there are events, there is a museum of the port, uh, all based on real equipment online, including one of our gantry crane simulators. There is the children's city where you can put, bring your child and they enjoy life together. So it's some kind of exhibition center. And it belongs to, let me say, exhibition industry entertainment. In front of this one, there is the aquarium of Genoa, that is uh, one of the most advanced in Europe, that include a shark, big, huge shark pool, huge dolphin pool, manatee, uh, penguins, uh, jellyfish, uh, very strange, very uh, animal that is not even easy to keep. And it's not a classical aquarium just to entertain, but in reality is a part of a uh, a research group uh, and is the one of the major attractions in Italy, by the way, in terms of attendees per year. When it was established, uh, it was very scientifically oriented, and uh, there was a discussion around the table about who will take care of owning and managing this one among the different players. There was Port Authority, there was the town hall, there was the regional administration, almost all the entity in general that was contributing in it. And nobody was willing to take because it was supposed to be very expensive in terms of management. You know, if you want to have an aquarium, it costs a lot of money and maybe you don't make so much money, it could be a big uh, trouble for your budget. At some point at that time, that was around 25 years ago, there was a, a big a company, Costa Cruise Ship, Cruise Line. You probably you know Costa because it sailed from uh, North Europe to Far East, from Italy to Caribbean, etc. Costa said, okay, I will do. And everybody was happy because he said, okay, it is a problem that we avoid. But Costa was so able in managing the aquarium that make it largely profitable. He introduced a strategy very smart 
going to collect people in the school all around Italy, organizing travel over their trips, educational trips. This was something that have not, not, not too many in mind. Using model, business model from other price, it make it something that was supposed to be an institutional, heavy cathedral, very hard to manage in a profitable source. And everybody then complains, say, we was a, it was possible for us to take part in that, but we live all to cost. Eh? But it's too bad. In any case, the aquarium is really appreciated in general. Now. Near to the um, port, there is Fincantieri shipyard construction that is uh, belonging to another industrial sector that is shipping building and in some way related to shipping that order the ship. You know? So you can see we have a port, logistic, shipping, shipbuilding, entertainment all together. No? Now, let me move to see the same place from another perspective. You see the power plant that I mentioned before. No? This power plant produces power, produces power for the port, for the town, but even for the whole country. In fact, this power plant is not alone. For instance, connected with the power plant that is in Vado, around 45 kilometers away, 50 kilometers away, with that one in La Spezia, with the other one all around the nation and internationally. So the power plant is not operating by itself, but is part of a power grid, okay? where there are not just steam turbine plant, but now there are much more combined cycle. There are gas turbine, there are wind farm and wind turbine. There are uh, dams, Pelton all around the Alps. There is a generation by due to solar contribution. It's not huge, but is is any case is present. There are many sources of um, energy, and they are all interconnected in power grid. Let's take another view. In the surrounding of this area, there is Paul Wurt Metal. That is one uh, lead. This is the leader worldwide in the design and construction and service for blast furnace. Blast furnace, as you know, they produce pig iron. That is the basis to produce the steel. So you put together carbon and iron ore with some addictive in these huge towers where they melt all together. You don't get directly the steel, but you get the pig iron. There's some kind of steel with too much, too much carbon inside, then you Trait that is one normally in electrical uh, furnace with BOF or other process, and you generate the steel. That is the basis for the civil um, civil society because uh, introduction of steel allow us uh, the capability to construct a building that was not possible just using concrete and stone. We can co create a tall building. We can create uh, robust infrastructures. Uh, so. Steel, when we talk about steel, everybody thinks about guns because in the old uh, theory, steel is necessary to make war and for gun, but defense industry absorb a minimal part. Also cars, you can think, and ships, they absorb a part, but it's pretty reduced. The majority of the steel is used for construction. So if you have a country that is growing, it's growing in terms of population, so they need new house country that grow in terms of infrastructure, road, bridge, a country that grows in terms of factories, they need steel, okay? By the way, the steel, I feel, is the most used material around the world, okay? Uh, even if now it's in crisis, the steel industry, because there are too many, too much big production facilities, so there is much more offer than demand. In any case, you have, Company specialized in blast furnace and hot metal. Tenova that deal with metal mining and even port activities. ABB Power that is one leader in automation. We have ABB Power, ABB Industry. It is one of the best company around the world in the sector of automation. Um, if we look down, we have all about yachting. That is a company that makes just support to the yacht. And the other side, we have drafting sub oil and gas that deal with service, Cuba service and underwater service 
with about um, let me say scuba diver with um, structure that have some kind of carapace they can go underwater to operate at very high deep on the oil platform on the offshore platform so so if we look around we don't have just industry and company but we have the port authority the with this port we have a pickup point for amazon we have a company that does charter that is silogy we have some hotel that is based on booking or Airbnb. We have Italy that is a chain of food and we have taxi system. No? So as you can see all around this part that we, a single picture, we cover so many different business. Someone are local, some are big industries, someone are small industries and company, someone are high tech, someone are providing web, supporting web economy. Someone are supporting consumers, someone are supporting industry, and almost all are intercorrelated. This gives you a picture of what we, is a complex system that usually have complexity that are internal and complexity that are external, but we will see soon. But in any case, it's evident that this system is strongly interconnected and the failure of some component could re re generate failure in other levels. So let me take a look on the concept of complex system. What, first of all, what is a system? A system is a, mix, is a combination of multiple entities. Okay? A knife of B is a system. Okay? A, an highway network is a system. An amphibious operation is a system. Okay? When you have multiple entities, you have any system. And a complex system is an entity that is composition of interconnected element that have their own characteristic and their behavior, not simply derived by the component of the single element. What it means? It means that if you look, for instance, to each of these questions, the behavior of the hive is not easily understandable based on the observation of the single bees. Okay, because they have, due to the interaction among the multiple bees, the, the multiplicity of bees, and their different kind of uh, specialization, no? it uh, generates behavior that are not intuitive, okay? And that are called often emergent behavior. The same in traffic, no? Same in traffic, it means that if you create a, a larger new piece of highway to, decon to reduce the traffic jams in a place, this one will attract a lot of flow and maybe will become even more jammed than before because giving a new opportunity, maybe many people more will use the car and could oversaturate by his own success. This kind of not intuitive behavior, emergent behavior, are very important because are fundamental in order to understand how the complex system uh, evolve and what is the impact of possible action or decision that we take over it. Okay, in general, we have application. Okay. Yes, tell me, ask. I have please. a question. Very well, pose me the question. The previous, about the previous uh, you know, uh, page you showed to us. This one? Yes, this one. Uh, actually, we have a definition of the complex system, but I'm a little confused here because, for example, imagine about the ship. In the ship, we have, for example, uh, a pump, we have a turbine. So the turbine itself is a complex system, okay, because it uh, combines a lot of uh, small systems like, for example, the PLC, which control the rate of the turbine, or I don't know, electrical system, the mechanical system. And yes, actually, go. And actually, it's, uh, it is working beside in other systems, uh, for example, hydraulic system. And uh, the whole system uh, create a ship. So the ship itself is, uh, again, in, the, in other systems, for example, in the Navy, all right? So yeah. uh, the, uh, when we want to define a complex system, uh, where is the uh, you know where is the beginning point? For example, about the body of human, 
the body of human is a complex system, okay? But if we, if we imagine, for example, I don't know, the heart, it's uh, again a lot of system uh, containing a muscle. So the muscles again is uh, mm, containing a lot of molecules, which molecules combine with other molecules uh, create a muscle. So how we can define the beginning, po uh, the beginning point where we can say it is a complex system or not? Very good question. Very good question. The point uh, I I will give an answer as an engineer. Okay. In if by philosophy point of view, it's very hard to understand where to stop. You know. Because as you can say, there is, uh, you can see complexity in mi micro and in macro. Okay. However, first of all, we make a distinction between system and complex system, because in a complex system, respect a regular system, we have, we generate this uh, not intuitive behavior, okay? We have difficulty to predict how we'll perform. And this difficulty arises or by the internal complexity due to equation or, be, or uh, mechanism that we don't know well or that even if we know we cannot solve. I make you an example. We have a thermochemical dynamical equation that regulates the behavior of this reactor in a chemical process. I know the equation, I, but I don't know how to solve it analytically, okay? And so I cannot predict exactly what will happen because near to some boundary condition, it could have some kind of very strange reaction, like a fighter when arrive near to the supersonic speed, okay? But, and then you can have complexity due to interaction among many entities. Now, you pose a very good example that one of human body or the case of the turbine. I will say not the turbine by myself because maybe the turbine is not a complex system, the turbine, but machine. So let me say the turbine with the blade and in the rotor and in the stator. But the turbine has a plant. So as you exactly as you say, the turbine included not just the mechanical turbine, and let me say the thermodynamical process of a gas turbine. But the, the turbine as a part of a system that in, include the control system, PLC, et cetera, valves and uh, conduct uh, and duct, et cetera, it's for, it uh, results in being almost a, a, a complex system. No, a complex. But we have systems that are difficult to understand and systems that we cannot, um, that are difficult to predict and systems that we cannot predict. Where to stop, where to put the boundary? Now came the answer by an engineer. It depends on what is your goal. I mean, what is your horizon? We was looking at the port, you know? What I have to do with this port? And this is how we model. When we say how to model and design complex system, it's exactly that. We know the port is a complex system. We know there are many different entities that interact, etc. cetera. But, but what are the interactions relevant for my purpose? I make you an example. I need to optimize the container terminal. If I need to optimize the container terminal, probably I don't care about all these business that stay all around. For me, port authority could be just a resource that needed to authorize me to move or not move based on availability of some technical service, or maybe it's not even involved in that, okay? So I will define my border. I will define what are my entity and up to what level I will need it to arrive. Let's assume vice versa, my goal is to reduce the cyber vulnerability of the port. Maybe I will have a different horizon. For instance, maybe I don't care too much of the, for instance, in this case, they use some kind of truck and trailer to move container inside the, the, the port. If this one don't have a wireless system and they just have truck driver, that move, internal truck driver that move the container around, 
maybe they they are not very vulnerable to any cyber attack maybe i don't care too much or vice versa they could be vulnerable because their plan of operation is printed on a piece of paper and this piece of paper is printed by a computer if i compromise i can make them go around forever but maybe don't do big damage so for each problem i feel that i need to define what are my goals and when i know my goal I know how to define the border. You, as a strategic engineer, you will have, one of your major responsibility will be to identify what are the elements to be included and what are the elements to neglect or to don't consider. Okay, is it clear? Yes, it is clear. I understand that it is our duty to define the complex system, and sometimes we have to omit another options to define our border. Am I right? Yes. yes, let me say, not to define the complex system, maybe, because complex system exists, to define the border of the model of the complex system, or to define the part of the complex, of all the, com of all the system around that we needed to include to address our problem, okay? Okay, all right, but another question now arise, how we can be sure about uh where we can define the border about for example as you say the cyber attack maybe the cyber attack uh, can cause damage on something that we cannot imagine right now okay for example the cyber attack can change the time of the systems so it can collide a lot of accidents something like that that related to that track that you mentioned the track that the driver uh, drive it all right so about some, uh, you know, unpredictable uh, uh, points, how we can to interact with this uh, result? Okay, you know, if we talk about, for instance, uh, improving security of a system, obviously we cannot predict any possible uh, attack because uh, the human mind is very flexible. Tomorrow you can think to cyber attack that maybe are not in our mind now, okay? Okay. So for instance, I can produce some kind of synthetic dust of material that is very good for connect to, to connect electrical device and you can create a cloud that will make in a short circuit all the systems that are outside blocking all the equipment. It will be not cyber, it will be physical, but will create then vulnerability maybe on the cyber side. So and this is something that I cannot think about everything. But what I can do, I was answering just on such question years ago, is exactly the opposite. If I was a terrorist willing to attack this port, I can create a model to support my planning, correct? Because I have an idea, such idea generated by my imagination, by my creativity, and I create a model and test how it works, what I needed to make it work, what are the, the problems, etc. So it's good to plan an attack. So how I can plan a defense? Plan a defense by thinking about potential attack and improving the resilience of the system. Obviously, I cannot predict where they will attack me, but I can use the same weapon that is used to plan against me very effectively in order to plan how to defend from this hypothesis. I'm not sure, I will be not sure to have taken consideration all the elements, but we do exactly as we do with safety. I don't know if you are familiar with safety, but especially let me talk safety as C of the sheep. Sheep are one of the most dangerous things men face since the primitive age, because to face the sea, to sail around, is not an easy game, and sea could be very hard. Along the century, each single failure, each single accident, was a way to improve the safety, because we learn that there was something that was uh, causing potential accident, and we substitute, we define some control, we improve, and going step by step, we, get, we was arriving at the actual level of safety and continue improving. 
in the beginning of um, 900, the last century, on um, Texas City, a town facing the, the ocean, Atlantic Ocean in Texas, there was a nitrogen ammonium explosion. That was the biggest industrial explosion of the human life that killed all, over half a thousand of people. Okay, There was in a storage related to ship operation, port operation. Five years ago, 2015, there was in Tianjin an explosion. I don't know if you have seen the explosion. No, I just. Tianjin, I never remember coming. Explosion. I need to go in. Yahoo, do you still see the screen? You see my screen? Yes, Professor. Yeah. All right, this was uh, the explosion in Tianjin, okay. But it's not the, the view that I was willing to show you. Let me see, because now it's never possible to find the right one. Let me check if I find the right one. Tianjin, explosion. I feel it's this one. So this is a view from a skyscraper of an hotel. This was around 200,000 something tons of nitrogen of ammonium. It was ignited by uh, the nitrogen ammonium is not so dangerous. You have an image of the size of this explosion because you see the building, no? You realize it's pretty big. Now that the audio maybe is not very expert, it is Western guy in China. Tianjin is the ninth port in the world. It was the biggest port to import in China for over a century. That one they introduced technology in China. This seems the big explosion. In fact, the big explosion I feel is not yet uh, happened. This is the big explosion, okay? So as you can imagine, this was similar to the event that happened in uh, Texas City, but ignition factor was different. In Texas City, we learned to do something, we change. This material is still dangerous, but we have, uh, you know, in some way, learned that to reduce some risk. Five years after Tianjin explosion, that was just 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 kiloton, so like a small nuclear warhead. There was an explosion one month, uh, almost two months ago, one month and 25 days ago, 28 days ago, in Beirut, still nitrogen of ammonium. That was uh, the biggest explosion, industrial explosion that happened since now in humankind that uh, killed the 200 people, I feel, around. So less than in Texas City one century ago, more than in China. but. Uh, or around maybe the same than China, I don't remember, but uh, leave uh, 300 people without house, okay? 300,000 people without house. So it was uh, just the problem to solve is nitrogen of ammonium storage? No. The accident is the same? No. Ignition factor were different, condition was different. We know that nitrogen of ammonium could be a danger, by itself, it doesn't create big problem because it just burn. But if you put a huge quantity inside, the sequence of the fires goes so fast that they create explosion. And if you see explosion, in this case, the last one that I don't know if you have opportunity to see, but unfortunately we have people from Lebanon around. It's maybe less... Uh, scenographic than the twining that was happening in Tianjin, but you can realize the size of this explosion. This is almost the power, the power of a small nuclear warhead, one kiloton, that one that you use in, 
in tactical operation on the battlefield, okay? So as you can see, the context seems the same, but the reality is different. So it's up to us to define the border. We should learn. We should learn working with our engineering approach, talking with the subject matter expert. I will call a chemical engineer. I will call somebody that is dealing with the chemical storage of this material that have experience on previous accident with people expert of the operation of ship, etc. And I will study all the previous cases in order to improve step by step. Unfortunately, sometimes something happened that was not expected and we learn more. Unfortunately, we learn by our mistakes. But obviously, if we create a model, we can be much more efficient to learn quickly what is the best way to face some of this challenge. Okay. I hope this okay. answered the question. And let me move yes, forward. Yes, completely. Thank you very much. Don't mention. What is the mean meant by a complex system? Okay. First of all, there are many different sectors, no? From a plane, we can go down for biology. That was example for your colleagues, okay? Um, we have uh, two definitions. One is a system composed of interconnected parts that as well exhibit one or more property. Not obviously, and that was the previous one. So another one is a system having many interrelated interactions or interconnected element in the interface, okay? Among this one, normally there is a combination that is, uh, they could have a simple or complex function and simple or complex domain. Let me make an example. A simple, simple system of simple function, simple physical domain is very easy to predict. Normally, very easily we use engineering approach and let me say usually even linear analysis. Linear, is a linear system, almost linear system, at least a linear within some boundary, some range, so we can easily grasp. If it is simple in terms of physical domain, but complex as function, no? <laughs> it could be generate random perturbation that seems complexity, okay? And we needed to make it work, traditional engineering, by using robust design. What means? Let me make an example very easy. Let's take a terminal container, okay? Let's move to the plus. Okay, well, who I can address? Ali Abdel Latif Mustafa Mohammed, are you there? Yes, Professor. Okay, let's consider that we have a terminal container. Do you know what is a terminal container, no, Ali? Yes, yes. Okay, let's assume this terminal container receive normally ships that carry around 10,000 TU. TU is a measure of this 20 equivalent unit container. So let's say they, they arrive, they unload around 5,000 containers and load 5,000 containers, okay? As average, Ali. Okay. So in my container terminal, there is the capability to store around 15,000 containers, okay? Okay. So what happened? Somebody called me and asked me, look, I have a ship that was supposed to go in Marseille, in south of France, but they say that could have a strike there. Can I go in Genoa and unload the ship? Obviously, I will pay you for that. It's a, for me, it's a business opportunity, you know? but I need to know if I have the space to unload the container, because if I don't have the space, I will unload the container, but I don't know where to put. So, or I cannot unload, or if I unload, I saturate all the space and my terminal will collapse for several days, or I don't work, or if I work, it takes me forever to do even a simple operation. I will need more worker, I will need to pay extra time shift, I will cost me more, I will produce low, I will keep the ship for longer time at the dock, I will pay penalty. Is okay, Ali? Yes, okay. Very good. So, so I need to know if I will have the space in, let's say, eight days from now when this ship arrives. But look, if the ship that I have planned, because my port, each day arrive a ship and leave a ship almost. So 
I, it seems that I have space, but I have a big ship that should arrive and unload many containers a couple of days before. But there is bad weather all around, and it could happen that we'll arrive, that it could arrive, uh, let me say, with some day of delay. So if by chance it arrives when there is the other one, hey, my terminal will be saturated. So I should not accept this business proposal. But if I arrive in time, I'm okay. What is your feeling that I can do in order to be sure that uh, it could work or not? I can I take this decision based on your feeling, Ali? Okay. Now, first of all, uh, as the main per the main the main construction is the 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 space available in the in the ter in the terminal uh, yard. So if uh, we can we can maybe uh, use some extra uh, some extra workers. Maybe to increase the 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 possibility uh, to empty the the yard on this on on this basis only you can accept any any other any other ships with other containers. Exactly, but let's assume I, you are a young engineer and a strategic engineer. I ask you to create a simulation model, a model of the shipping coming, a model of the terminal, etc. And I realize this result to some kind of chaotic system. Why chaotic? Because a simple delay of a ship of 24 hours that could happen due to weather situation, due to problem with the engine, etc., could make it uh, all the system to collapse. No? Yes, so I mean, it is a system, it, it turned to be, by the model analysis, not predictable. If you cannot predict, you, cannot, you can't take a decision like this one, okay? So you lose a lot of business opportunity. What you can do? In this case, you can change, thinking obviously the right time, you can change the, um, the term of the problem. For instance, I can say, okay, now it's chaotic because I have a 15 slot for container in my terminal and my ship can unload up to 10,000. So I am at 25%, but if I arrive a big one, I arrive at... 85% and I mostly full and I start to have a problem. I arrive another one a little bit early and I collapse. But I can do something. If I have space, if I have possibility, I can increase the number of slots. For instance, I said up to now, I store in container on three tiers in three levels. Let's move to five. From 15, I will go up to 25. Maybe with 25, the 10,000 container more, create troubles, but still manage one. So do you understand? I can even look, work around. Obviously, it's not something to solve the problem of two weeks next week, but could be a way to, to design a system to avoid it to be chaotic. Sometimes you have to look around to identify the problems and prevent them, okay? Thank you very much, Ali. Then we can have a system that I have complex domain and simple function, okay? In this case, uh, we have, uh, let me say, function that are not critical, but we cannot uh, evaluate all the possible combination. And so we can uh, have a problem that are complicated and could uh, turn to be difficult to, to be managed under specific boundary condition. And finally, we have system that have complex functions and complex domain. And in this case, we needed to identify how to deal with emergent behavior, okay? Uh, the characteristics that you find usually in a complex system are, first is self-organizing. Very good example, traffic. If you talk with each town, uh, or, uh, town authority, let me say town hall, about anything, you know, it's there are very strange priority. I can say you that I was involved by a friend that have a small consulting firm, and they was consulting with one. We want to enter. They want to enter in the in the business of consulting uh, province, district, authority, town hall, etc. And they, we realize because I, I was helping. It is my friend giving some advice that the priority in Italian town up to three years ago was excuse me, excuse me, but the poop of the dogs or the pet, okay? Because they, the people say that we have a dirty street. Oh, 
that for me was not one of the major problem in town, but if people consider that a problem, and you can think about solution or whatever. But, uh, and then the other major problem that may be much more consistent is that one of traffic. So everybody wants to solve the problem of traffic, even where don't exist, okay? Because if you drive in Jakarta, probably you know what is traffic, while if you drive in Pavia, you have an idea of traffic that is a little bit maybe overestimating its impact. In any case, whatever you do to traffic, the traffic change and adapt. I mean, even if you close a critical street, after a while, the system get maybe some much worse situation. If you do even a wonderful work, I will say before, the people will find this new opportunity and will focus all together to use this new way that become maybe much more trafficked and may there be even the traffic will increase. This is classical self-organization. That doesn't mean that it is not useful to do nothing. I mean, there is no solution. It means that you have to consider that is not one way. There is a problem, you find a solution and that's all. The right solution is not. No, it's a system self-organized. You make a change and then the system adapts. You have to check and recheck and recheck up to you get the level of the service that you desire. Okay, very good. Then complex systems have no linear interaction. So generalization principle doesn't work. So it means that you cannot solve the problem by separating it. Then it adapt and then have heterogeneity. So they have many components in say and lead, we say the emergent behavior. I show you an example. Is, let me say a little bit, uh, is an example that stressed this concept and is a very hard simplification. So please forgive me if I make it easy, a, a, a situation that is very, 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 very complicated. I don't know if you are familiar with the history of China and Europe. Once it, upon the time, there was a people that was carrying out something that was called colonization, no? I don't know if uh, Ji Yong Bong Li, are you around? Gay Yong Bong Li, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Professor. Can you turn on the, the screen? Uh... Do, you, do you know that uh, there was colonization century ago, no? The Western country was making colonization of other places. You heard about that, no? Yes, I studied about that when I was in high school. Yes. Sure. In, in China, no, that is not your country, by the way. Even for some European, could sound a, a Chinese. I'm correct. You are not from China, no? Yes, I'm not. Okay. In China, around 150 years ago, there was. A, a movement that uh, the, the people was very poor. The aristocracy was a little bit confused, but they was making profit with European, but they don't like too much uh, the fact that the, the European was uh, draining resource from China and they was the poor people was seen as enemy. At some point, it started a big movement against Christians because European was bringing even religion and uh, let me say missionary that was priced that was converting people and against the foreigners. And they start to have a boxer movement. I keep it very easy eh, because it's, if you want to know the story, read the real book. I'm just using that for my example. But at some point, these poor people and the local aristocracy that don't know what to do with these, let me say, kind of invader, economic invader, start to make it attacks that was mostly murdering. So this group of boxers, if there was a foreigner walking around with a, a man and woman or a group, not necessarily military, because there was not a very military invasion, there was much more traders, they was killing, okay? It was a way to, let me say, react, some kind of violent uh, reaction. No? At some point, the emperor and the aristocracy decided that this movement could be a way to uh, defend the Chinese 
interest and keep a foreigner far away. So they give support to this far investment. At some point, they blocked all the European in Beijing. Over there was a combined force, I feel a unique case, where UK, USA, Italy, Japan, Russia, France, Austria, Hungary was under siege. 55 days with all the Chinese troops around in Beijing. They survived to this uh, siege, to the attacks that was supported by the Empress. And that, then uh, uh, troops coming from Europe was arriving, that was breaking the siege, and the war was won okay, by the Europeans. There, there was not a war, it was mostly a, a set of battle and a siege. Okay. After this victory, the, UP, the European that was penetrating inside China, violating the culture and draining out resources, get even more power because the Empress was defeated. Is keep the position, but they have to give something to the European and allow that the port near to Beijing was transformed in an open port where European can bring goods and technology and bring out the goods and technology. This was Tianjin port, by the way, the same that we have seen before. And this was the port in the picture that you see uh, in yellow paper. It was very tiny. Now is the ninth port. The European, by entering this town, was uh, even forcing to construct a quarter in European style, but they get a full access to China, they introduced a lot of technology in China that was not existing at all, from telegraph to electrical power and so on. This new technology entering in China spread around China, after that, acquired this technology, and now it's exactly the opposite. The China economy explode and invade all the world. So if you look, originally the Chinese movement that was at the time of Boxer was to keep away the European that was violating resources in China and was risky to destroy the culture of China. Their failure in this rebellion was the reason of the success of China because allowed to introduce technology in China. Now, it's evidently that this is a, there are many more factors. It was not this single movement. But in fact, as you can see, when you have a complex system, you don't know exactly what will happen because you have many interactions. Do you understand, Lee, what I mean? Perhaps so. Okay, so in this kind of case, we, can, we don't have a big capability to predict what will happen in a century, no? In this case, about 150, cent 150 years after what happened. It was, no, it was a little bit less, but uh, for instance, the picture and uh, of the starting movement, the Tianjin Boxer Rebellion that was going from 1899 to 1901, and the result that we have nowadays, that is uh, 2010, uh, when Tianjin was arriving to be one of the best ports in the world, but was already very big, even 20 years ago and even more. This is a demonstration that we need to pay attention and to consider all the implications. Sometimes we cannot predict because we don't have crystal ball, but we should identify the risky factor. Okay, Lee? Yeah, Professor. Let me see now what is the complexity in terms of mathematical approach. Computational, we have different kind of complexity. For instance, computational complexity is the amount of resource required to run an algorithm. What it means that to create an algorithm, you need some computational power. If I needed to simulate the collision of two galaxies, each one with billion of stars and comets. There are even billion of comets in solar system. I require some computational power, okay? Because I need to consider all the interactions. So as you can imagine, these require some complexity in terms of computation. But there is even Kolmogorov of complexity. That is the dimension of the shortest computer program that reproduce an object as output, okay? 
So if I need to define a string or a piece of a text or a sequence or a 3D model, if I measure how long is the shorter program based on a language, I can choose Python, C, Sharp, C++, whatever. This gives me an idea of this kind of complexity. Please note that this definition dates back 1963. So half a century or, or more than half a century, okay. The column of complexity introduces some kind of, uh, let me say, consequence such as incompleteness uh, theorem by Gödel. Maybe somebody of you have heard about Gödel. Gödel. Gödel was saying that there is no consistent system axiom was theorem can be listed by an effective procedure that is capable of providing all true about the artin matrix of number, numerical na natural number. That means that if you have a scheme of uh, axiom, etc., you can find always some inconsistency on it. That was a huge uh, strike against the big expectation of logic and mathematical lo logic and mathematical thinking of um, last century, but it's very interesting. No, it, uh, it is even putting out in some way what your colleague would say, that the halting problem is in different term, the problem of determining from a description of a computer uh, program and his input, when the program will finish to run or if we continue to run. And we cannot have the capability to handle this case perfectly. This was pointed out by Alan Turing, that you know is one of the major uh, mind in artificial intelligence. We can consider even the inventor of artificial intelligence and the, 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 the inventor of Turing test, that is the ultimate check for discriminating if a machine is intelligent or not. By the way, any of you know how it works the, the Turing test? Any of you would like to try to answer to machine, to Turing test for artificial intelligence? Um, I think that it's a, a test that is used to prove that a machine can theoretically run any program. And the analogy is like a, a tape that goes through a computer and the tape can save variables and have instructions. And then the tape can only go forward and backward. It's, it's something like that, I think. In reality, Turing test is based on this aspect, the capability to discriminate between a human and a machine or a human that is supposed to be intelligent and a machine. The classical Turing test is made in this way you put the subject under test in front of a terminal, okay? And you pose questions by writing down the question. If he's able, after several questions that you pose, you can discriminate if the, that one that is answering you is a human or is a machine, this is the test that an artificial intelligence need to pass, okay? There has been many, let me say, strange solution to Turing test. That means that uh, on the Turing test, there was a Lisa once, if I remember properly. There was a computer program that was answering based on um, predefined uh, phrase. So not really understanding my question, but identify something to reply. For instance, if I ask, what about the weather in your place? And it was just recognizing the word weather, she was selecting a, a phrase that was a phrase that was in addressing weather, say, my ear is raining, okay? Uh, it's some kind of, it's called the, the, the problem of uh, Chinese box. It's something like in the other side of the terminal that I don't know if there is a man or a machine, there is somebody that have infinite Chinese boxes. And when he receive a question, he don't understand the question, but see a sign on the question that correspond to some box that he have in this infinite shell. He choose this box and give an answer that he don't know what it means, but is related to the question, okay? Uh, this is not intelligence, obviously. 
Uh, there was even machine that was uh, confusing and almost passing the Turing test, but passing in improper way by acting as a human, but as a medium, giving uh, the answer that could be generated by the person with insanity. Okay, even this is a walk around; it's not a real situation. Nowadays, when you talk with a bot. Sometimes it seems to you to talk with the person. After a while, you realize that you talk with an artificial intelligence that give answer to some of your questions. For instance, we have a bot in Genoa University. I don't know if you never try, where you can pose question about uh, inscription procedure and administrative issue, and it's terrible. You it don't even look like a, a human. You don't look as a human. You don't look like a machine. You look just as somebody that answered systematically, I don't understand, please call the office. But any case, this test is not easy to pass because obviously during a discussion with an intelligent creature, I can address so many aspects that is not easy to pass. You will have a preliminary course. It will be just two, three lectures about bots that maybe will introduce you in how to, let me say, use our actual artificial intelligence capability to answer to a bot. By the way, I would like you to I would like to introduce you now. It's, we are a little bit out of our goal, but I feel it's an important subject. Maybe some of you heard that a large quantity of very highly qualified scientists years ago write down a document, including Stephen Hawking, that maybe is more popular, and even top uh, of top owners of a major in industry, night tech, say that there is a high risk for super AI, super artificial intelligence, that will turn to be a threat for mankind. Anybody of you heard about that? Luigi Martello, do you heard about that? Hello, Professor. Unfortunately not. I, I didn't hear about that. Okay, maybe anybody else? Mayed Paparizare? Welcome, yes, by the way. I heard about that. Okay, Media Raufi, very good. So it's, um, you know, in science fiction is usual. In science fiction, almost the time is invented an artificial intelligence, it turned to be hostile to humans, okay? Classical example, Terminator, to mention the most uh, let me say, Hollywood style movie, but many other ones. I will say that there is a, one of the few, but it's not in reality, the only one. One of the few modern uh, myth is that one of Frankenstein, no? from Mary Shelley, where the human create a machine and this machine goes against the human. But there is the robot uh, of the, that gave the name to robot that gives some similar behavior, but even Golem, meet in the past where a man create a huge uh, creature made of uh, of uh, mud and then animate and then use against or in favor. Any case, um, the point about artificial intelligence, I make you an example. Let, we know that a lot of people think a major problem. I feel one of these one is even here. Stefano, are you here? There is one of your colleagues. Uh, yes, I'm here, I'm here. Stefano, on Friday you say that the major problem we have to face is climate change, correct? Exactly, correct. I don't know if it's the major, but could be a major, okay? But okay. climate change is, is caused by many elements, no? from the sun to the CO2 emission, etc. Do you feel CO2 emission are a major issue? So green, uh, no. greenhouse gases, do you, do you feel it's important to reduce the greenhouse gases? Yes, it's important, but uh, uh, the CO2 emission uh, not are in the top of the, uh, classific, uh, the, the classific. And what is on the top of the classific? Uh, I think the um, uh, large... Uh, uh, the eat uh, meat is the is in the top, I think. The meat, uh, the, the, you, you mean the breeding of animal to eat? Yes, the, the production of meat. Yeah, but the production of meat generates uh, 
CO2. Yes. Okay, so if you reduce the CO2, you reduce uh, the, the greenhouse emission, you reduce climate change, correct? Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. So very good. Stefano, so if I am an artificial intelligence, you explain me the problem. You, I, I create a model. I reproduce of the model. Let's assume the greenhouse emission are one of the key factors. Maybe not, but let's say there are green factors. So what is the principal cause? The animals, not only the animal that you grow to, to eat, but all the animals, because all the animal breed. All the animal, uh, sorry, breed, breed, no? They, they, each one of us, when I talk, I inspire oxygen and I emit CO2, correct? Yes. And we are responsible for probably around 40% of the emission. Okay. Okay. So the solution is to cancel animal life over the earth's surface. No. <laughs> No, there is. I am an artificial intelligence. I find this is the right solution. At the moment, is the more effective. So I will erase any animal life from the surface of the earth. So you Sorry, have to professor. consider it. Yes, can I, maybe. Can I can I add a comment here? Sure. Uh, actually, I'm sorry to say that if you are a little more intelligent, maybe you decide uh, you make a decision to cut down the population of the human because the human are like the animals make uh, CO2 and also the human uh, uh, produce a lot of, you know, uh, animal farms and can cause more CO2 and also another, uh, you know, actions like driving like the plant. So maybe the artificial intelligence decided to cut down the population by, for example, to launch some missiles and, you know, to, uh, to start a war between some superpower countries to cut down the population. Yes, it is the threat that IE can cause for human because they are not uh, because they do not have emotion and also they are not considered all of the factor. Just they want to find a re the, the solution. Maybe I really appreciate your point. I feel it, yes, it's possible. My feeling is not just because of emotion. This is very common in science fiction measure. They don't do because of emotion. They do for two basic reasons. First of all, if they decide to do, okay. Uh, first of all, because they have different perception of reality. So maybe you are a human, you are, have two eyes if, if you have a normal physiological condition, you have two ears, you have the skin to touch and to get the feelings, you have the taste on your tongue, you you perceive five cents at least, okay? And uh, artificial intelligence don't perceive in this way, perceive in other way. Even if you have a camera, their view is different. Even if you have a sensor of temperature, they are different. So perceiving the world in a different way means that uh, he will see things in a different way and will identify solution in different way. Second one, you are a human, your brain could be different. Maybe it's, it's different from mine as from any other one, but it's basically based on the same structure, while an artificial intelligence have a different algorithm behind, different scheme. So that means that when we talk about AI, their principles are different. Now, Usually we don't deal with an Armaged nuclear Armageddon created by an artificial intelligence, even if it's possible. But let me say that it's much more consistent the fact that, that if you train an artificial intelligence improperly, like a neural net, or if you provide improper target function to an artificial intelligence based on genetic algorithm, it will find solutions that are correct, but they are not good. I give you an example, maybe. Years ago, I was developing a system for one of the major companies in power plant to optimize the management of the spare part. That was meaning you just you decide, it gives suggestion how many spare part and kit and blade of turbines to keep on the inventory 
how to distribute among different area to support the different customer, how to share, how many to reuse or revamp when it was convenient to revamp or reuse, when to do the inspection of the turbine and when to do the man maintenance to make it more available. And the goal was to reduce the cost, improve availability and make more money. It was working fine. It was working mostly on two areas. Inventory optimization, so how many spare parts you keep, and the schedule of the event. Now, now at some point, my, my customer was using this system. And once they called me and say, look, this, the system is proposing us a very bad uh, solution, doesn't work, et cetera. What happened? They required to the artificial intelligence, in this case was a mix of fuzzy logic and genetic algorithm. They was asking them to reduce the cost, reduce cost at the minimum, and just work on the inventory. And what have done the artificial intelligence? Very easily. I say, okay, you don't want to buy, you want to reduce the cost for buying spare part and uh, blades, etc. Very easy. We don't buy more blades. We don't buy more spare parts. What will happen? When something break, we take this component from another plant. So we do cannibalization, as we say in engineering, cannibalization of other machines. Obviously what happened, that if you cannibalize other machine, the availability and reliability of their machine decrease. But if you don't consider the cost due to the fact that these machines are producing less and go in failure more often, and they stay down for longer period, this is a genius solution. Obviously, it's a genius solution if you don't see a part of the problem. So the artificial intelligence was working fine, but I say, look, in your target function, you give a very huge importance to cost. You don't give importance to availability. Availability corresponds to cost because for each day or not function of a plant, you will pay $300,000. So if you don't consider this cost because you put zero on this parameter and I was teaching, and showing what you do, obviously the system stop to buy and say, okay, at some point I buy it until some year, because I have a horizon of 12 years, I buy up to the eight year and the last four years we go just by cannibalization. Obviously there is a trade-off if you do that. If you consider the right cost for availability, maybe trade-off is the last three months. If you put the, the, tra the value of the stop, to zero, maybe the cannibalization may turn to be convenient after six years. So as you can see, maybe uh, it's strongly related to the boundary condition, but even to the perception of the AI. And so we need to pay attention when we deal with AI to avoid this problem. There is even the opposite problem, if you like. An AI that a bot is a very simple artificial intelligence system, they try to give, give you answer, not really to understand and to develop a new strategy. That is much easier. But in some way, want to cheat with you to convince you that you is intelligent. If you talk with the Siri of iPhone, you pose a question about um, anything uh, philo physio philosophical, sometimes give answer just to get you engaged with him. But it's just some kind of fake. You don't understand really the question. Is it clear, Midi? Yes, Professor. Thank you. Very good. Let's move forward. Front roads theory. Okay. Front roads theory deals with the algebraic automata theory. And the idea is that when you have some system, you can create a finite state automata that reproduce your behavior. Here one is the state of an by the element his own role and his each operation that have a hierarchical approach. The other one is a scheme of a model that maybe we'll see in next month about the behavior of a frigate that need to carry out pirate, uh, counter pirate uh, patrolling. And this uh, set of boxes and um, rhombos define what is the behavior based on simple rule, but the general behavior of the system of the frigate seems co coherent. Sometimes you can create very good uh, representation of behavior, even with models that look simple,
but put in the right condition, they are consistent with the real one. Okay. One important aspect of the complex system is they are dynamic. So it means that it is very important to understand what is the current situation and that this could change. I give you an example. Maybe many of you know about the Battle of Trafalgar. Anyone heard about Trafalgar Battle? Daniel Sirna. Daniele Sirna. Italian. Azal Zargara. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I... Yes, Professor, I'm here. Okay, you both. Did you heard about the uh, Trafalgar battle where Nelson defeated uh, the fleet of uh, Spain and uh, France? Uh, uh, I, I, unfortunately, I haven't heard about it before, but I think it must be battle between France it's and America. It's a naval like battle that mostly de destroyed the, the naval capability of French fleet. Daniele, did you know about it? Uh, it could be uh, that uh, battle against uh, pirates, I don't remember uh, precisely, but uh, where there are some mercenary. Okay. Yes. You know, I... the, no, 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 no mercenary. There was the UK fleet led by Nelson that yes. fight against the Spanish and, and French fleet and the defeat. Any case, you know that in at sea Napoleon was uh, defeated many times. Napoleon oh, forces, yes. and the UK was let me say uh, they say ruled the sea, ruled the ocean, while the French was much more victorious on land. Okay, with Napoleon armies. Now it's very interesting the fact that after during the um, the independence war in America, the French fleet was defeating sometime the. British Navy, the Royal Navy. Okay, for instance, Battle of Chesapeake. Chesapeake is a, a bay near to, let me say, near to Washington to keep it easy in Virginia. And there was a battle on 1781 where French was winning against the, the force of UK. Okay, so Royal Navy was not undefeatable. Just after Less than 20 years, so much before Trafalgar, there was the Battle of Nile, and where it happened that the UK fleet attacked the French fleet in front of Egypt. It destroyed the French fleet, and Napoleon was at Egypt in near to the desert without any connection to bring back troops in France. And if maybe you remember that he was going through the land and he was winning the battle on the land, but his fleet was defeated. There was the same two fleet, Royal Navy and French fleet, okay? But once they was victorious and the other one, no. Why? For instance, there is not, uh, I, I don't want even this, in this case, I don't want to give you the right answer, okay? It's just uh, an hypothesis. A good, a good friend of me that is from France, that is expert in marine and currently work in the science as a top scientist in a major defense organization for NATO on actual problem. But he liked to study story. And he said that the major question was there was French Revolution in between. During French Revolution, what happened? It was happening, maybe you remember, Daniele, they was killing a lot of aristocrats, correct? Yes. Azal, do you know they were using guillotine? There was a device that was cutting the head of the people that was a noble and aristocrat. Do you heard about Azal, no? Yes, yes, Professor, I've seen them in the movies in the sometimes. Movie. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, can you imagine who was the captain and officer on the Navy on, on, at that age? Um, not really. In reality, the Navy was one of the places where to put the, the person that was uh, the person from aristocracy. So there was uh, maybe not the first born child of a noble family, of a baron, of a count, etc. Maybe the second kid, the, the third kid, was sent to army or to the Navy. 
and I was turning to be great sailor and get great Navy officer. But during French Revolution, these people was uh, killed, okay? Now, killing these people create the, the ships that was around don't have a good commanders on board. And this is one of the reasons why the fleet was not able to be more competitive with the UK, okay? So the same fleet, the same ship, the same crew, but different officer on command make a change over 15 years, okay? Now, it's a simplification, as I mentioned. Don't consider. But our complex system have a strong dynamics, usually. And it's intuitive, because if the system is simple, it's a machine, they perform almost always the same. But if the system is composed by many components, if you touch one that change over time, it change all the behavior. It makes sense? Huh? Yes, Professor, it's clear. Sure. I understand the, the importance of the leadership also. Yeah, sure. Complexity and sec Yeah, go. Daniel. You need to be able to analyze the data like the general was able to guide the, the fleet. Sure. The point is that it's very difficult to carry to to, um, how do you say, it's very difficult to sail a ship of line like the old uh, military vessel at the Napoleon age because there was a huge ship with many sail. Sail is not easy, it's not easy to coordinate, it's not easy, the technique is much more complicated than that one of the army. And cutting that the leadership that was even more crucial because once at sea you was isolated, this is the reason why the captain have so much authority on a ship. Because normally a ship at that time when they were sailing, they were sailing and not able to communicate frequently with the command. And so the captain have to take his own decision. If you destroy this decision capability, you don't have more the capacity. Even if you have the same ship, the same cannon, the same ammunition, a good trained crew, maybe you are not able to succeed, okay? Yes, got it. Okay, complexity and security. Now, we were talking before just a little bit about security. Eh? Normally, as much as complex a system, as much vulnerabilities, because you have many more elements that you can attack, okay? So it's evident that when we talk about, uh, for instance, money, here there are two opposite systems. On the top left, you have something that maybe you recognize. In Italian, it's Paperon de Paperoni. In English, it's Scrooge. Probably you have seen on Disney movie, this guy that is an old duck that have a lot of money and is pretty genuine, we can say, in terms of desiring to keep his own money. Daniel, have you seen it? Eh? Yes, so when I was money. young, I read a lot of uh, Topolino. <laughs> If you put all the money in this big safe and it's only in one place and there is only one entrance, it's not easy no, for the bad guy to store the money. Below is a, a graph that maybe we'll see later, but it's a graph of the logical process that regulates SWIFT. SWIFT are money transfer in the banking system. There are so many elements that it's not so difficult to understand that came out. So here we have... A, a, a zoom that you can have many different elements that you can attack in order to store money, okay? Because you have many translation from the different player, the different nodes. Obviously, you can increase the, the, the security by putting additional element, but normally each additional element introduces even potential vulnerability. For instance, I always stress when we talk about cyber war, that cyber don't work by itself. Many times the problem is not to use brute force to break some firewall or to use some smart algorithm to get something or to sniff some password. No? For instance, probably most of you knows that there are devices that, that is possible to intercept communication. Let's say we all communicate along email, WhatsApp, uh, all the social network, et cetera. All these communication can be 
compromised potentially, no? But uh, if I transmit the information across the air, no, by Wi-Fi, by radio frequency, by Skycom, SkySat, communication satellite, etc., they could be intercepted. No? Eventually, they could be decrypted, depending how much they are protected. But if I transmit information from an optic fiber, you cannot intercept because it's just light pulsation that go within a, a light, a, an optical fiber, no? some kind of glass, very tiny, maybe thousands or millions, that goes under the cable, under water or underground or whatever. So like that one that maybe bring a cable TV or internet into your own. So the communication, until they stay on the optical fiber, they are supposed to be safe. Do you feel they are safe? Anybody would like to answer? They are not safe, as I know. Uh, even they are not. Even you cut a piece of that wire, the fiber wire, you can uh, restore the data that they are transferred. As I heard about them. But maybe if you cut the the cable is a problem because if you cut the cable, it could turn immediately clear that the cable has been compromised. So it's not the way that we should uh, no, no. fear. I what? mean, for example, I mean, for example, you want to renew the cable, okay? Then you put out the old cable, someone can uh, even restore the data from the old cable. Yeah, but it's even easier. If you take a fiber, uh, optical fiber, and you you bend, the fiber, for ethical reason, where you bend, you get pulsation. If you read that is pulsation, you just can get the message that is going over. So almost all the solution that you can adopt can be vulnerable to this kind of action. Okay. So and how much more complex is how much hard is to check all the elements. I make an example with Lego. You will have probably an experience later on. If you give to a child to construct a tower, it's very easy with Lego. But if you ask a group to engineer to design and construct the tower in coordinated way, it could take hours to do something very simple. So unicity is easy to manage. Hierarchical and network system are very complex to be managed. Okay. In addition, there is a multi-scale aspect in complex system. What it means? The, the, the single end have some behavior. A group of ant have a behavior that is combined. And then if you aggregate more and more in an hive, they have even a different kind of behavior. There are techniques of artificial intelligence that are based on the concept of swarm the theory that deal with the fact to reproduce ant behavior because ants, while move, they leave a pheromone behind that defines some kind of a track. And if it, after a while, they evaporate. So the following ant find the shortest track because it's that one that stands for, for longer because a longer track will evaporate quickly and so will disappear while the shorter will stay. So this is some behavior that become on multi-scale, you can have different view. It's like to see a single human in a town, a single human demonstrating some behavior, but probably you can predict at the beginning of 2000, the first middle of 2000, there was a scientist from US that was developing a model able to predict almost precisely where you was in the next five days, hour by hour. But in effect, if you think about yourself, I can think about, I can predict where you are, even if you drive, because during working days, if there is a freedom to move, probably at that time you will travel to work, at that time you will travel back, at that time we'll do something. And if he was correlating even with the behavior of his uh, relative, if your wife or if your husband is going in Tuscany from Liguria to region of Italy, for doing something because he's in holiday, probably are expected that during the weekend you will join to him and so on. So very complex system could be decrypted sometimes. And even the town itself has its own logic because the area where you put an, an underground station 
will become more attractive for people, increase the demography, the value of a building will increase. Maybe the kind of people that will live over there will improve. If you let some area to degrade, maybe the, the most wealthy people will leave and other kind of people will arrive. So you have this multi-scale aspect, okay? In terms of complexity, we have completely different complexity. We talked about internal complexity, classical one, chemical and physical complexity, you know? Sometimes you have entities that change their structure based on boundary condition, as we know in, in manual material, that could drastically change the behavior of the system by itself, okay? Or you can have a characteristic that changing the composition of the temperature could, for instance, we was talking about um, pollution. In fact, we was talking about greenhouse gases before, but even if we talk to NOx, that are another major cause of not the greenhouse, but of uh, pollution in town generated by flue gas, it's interesting to see that changing the, the percentage of element, uh, some kind of structure like solid rich dense, it could be favor, it could be a very tiny percentage, but have a very good influence in reduction NOx, okay? Because they create different condition for oxidation process. And so this means that it's not intuitive that this behavior evolved. In general, the complex system could be very different. Here we have below an AUV, an autonomous underwater vehicle. We have a frigate, we have a USV, a unmanned surface vehicle, so a boat without crew. We have a UAV, a unmanned aerial vehicle, so a plane without um, crew. We have a control system, we have some fighter with people, we have a, a aircraft uh, that is a uh, how do you say, is um, air mobile that include a radar and then is um, lighter than air, so it can fly by itself. We have satellite. All these systems are example of usually quite complex systems. Normally in our society, even we observe complex systems on multi-layers because our society connect uh, communication, uh, fossil resource, power generation, Power generation support traffic light. Power generation is connected to hospital. Hospital need water. Power generation is connected to water resource. Communication interconnect everything, including banking and financing. The, the banking and financing are connected to legislative office, to military installation. So it's all a network interconnected. From some point of view, these interconnection make a redundancy and they make a resilience. From some other point of view, they create opportunity for to for be attacked, and so they create vulnerabilities. So it's important to analyze this system to make it reliable. Very rare that you can restrict to a single one, but it's very important that we understand how to model the boundary. Okay? We had a project in the past for European community to analyze, for instance, what it could be the resilience of European Union. This was a, just, a, a, let me say, a, an investigation. But uh, it's evident, I make an example that maybe is not politically correct, but as you know, I'm a professor, I not use it to be politically correct. But if in Europe, we have a percentage of people that are Catholic, a percentage of people that are Protestant, a percentage of people that are Jewish, a percentage of people that are atheist, a percentage of people that are Muslim, a percentage of people that are Hindi, and so on. If I change this percentage, this will introduce a desire of different regulation. No? The classical example is about women and if they need or not to have some kind, they can, if they are entitled or not to wear some kind of veil in front of their face. No? You know that in most of the European country, I feel in all European country, is forbidden to go in public area with your face covered because it's, a, it's con not, not for religion reason, but because in the past it was what was done by bandit to do crime. So masks are forbidden except during carnival or special event. Now everybody goes around with a mask and cover the face. 
But it's evident changing this percentage, you can have different kind of desire that could affect the society. Even if there is no any terrorist attack, this could influence fashion, market, behavior. No, Just before the attack on the Twin Tower on New York City, I was involved by the, a major retailer, the major retailer in Italy, to develop a new industrial process to produce something that we call it the muslin kitchen. What was the muslin kitchen? The people that belong to muslin religion as the people that belong to Jewish religion and even the Catholic and the, the Protestant have a regulation about food. No, Catholic are supposed to don't eat meat on Friday and Muslim are supposed to eat just uh, animals that has been slaughtered with some process. Usually in, in Italy, the major producer of kitchen, chicken, chicken, sorry, chicken, I apologize for my English, the chicken are killed normally by electricity. So they are lying down with that down on a fast conveyor belt. It's not very pleasant, by the way. And they they go across with that, passing between two electrodes. A shock is, uh, is like some kind of flesh is generated and then they die. In that case, they have to die giving out the blood. So the idea was to design a new line that should have some kind of blade to cut partially dead, not totally, and let them to lose the blood and die in this way. Uh, for me, the goal is, it was not in, I was not in the design of the machine, but I was in the developing the whole process. So upgrading the production line, defining how many to produce in this way, how many in the other one, how to introduce the market, how to plan the marketing campaign, how to identify if there was a good return from the field or if people don't care, or if people care a lot, if we, the sale was increasing, what was doing the competitor, all this kind of stuff. Okay. In reality, project was not finalized because with the Twin Tower attack, it, there was a, some kind of uh, strange behavior, even in Italy, in, in all Europe, especially in the United States, in that moment. And so it was considered to not be a good opportunity to pro introduce this product that could create uh, opportunity for discrimination, hate, uh, et cetera. And as people was living before, we was kept. This is an example, no, that sometimes boundary complex system could be subjected to big change and big uh, effect. And then you can find even big opportunity because usually we see that... Um, there are um, many alternatives that could be evaluated. And sometimes you can find over there some good uh, opportunity to work. Uh, OK, let me do something more. And then maybe we take a break, because I know that is hard to follow with this just uh, computer web uh, lead uh, instruction mode, web technology. Any case, some open question. The worry change in simulation lab, it's useful, et cetera. Let's take a look here. Game and reality, no? This game and reality, this picture that you see now, I feel you see the screen, is a robotic system made by a simulator, a, a simulator that is not a game, is a simulator to design production line. And this other picture of a production process in the manufacturing of automotive industry, both have the same date of this game. Now, you was not born in that time, in 1993, most of you, I was born. This was one of the first games that exploded for a computer, was called Wolfstein 3D. And the idea was not really 3D because there was just this kind of picture. And you was moving around shooting down Nazi inside a castle or something like that. And then they introduced some zombie and then lead to Doom and the series of the first-person shooter. No? This game now, I feel most of you will consider this game very trivial, very very low quality. At that time, was uh, very cool. And this just 30 years ago. Okay? If we look now, this is the same kind of game nowadays. Okay? And in 2016, that's still five years ago, when he was probably he was not even yet uh, and an adult uh, based on the concept or, or you was just turning 18, there are new opportunities. This is added manufacturing, addictive manufacturing was uh, existing since decades. Now everybody talk about 3D printing, but in aerospace industry, 
there was this kind of solution since decades. But obviously, it's different. If you have a machine that costs several million dollars, that produce pieces that cost unbelievable amount of money, or if you can buy a machine for $1,000 that produce you easily piece. Obviously, that one that was, so it's, a, it's completely new paradigm. You can do completely new things that before was not possible. Like um, fuel cell was used in uh, space since half a century ago. I don't know if it's half a century, but at least since, yes, half a century ago. I don't know, but at least 40 years, okay? But we don't have uh, fuel cell in our cars, even today, because obviously it depends. If you mount a satellite that costs several hundred million dollars, it's different than if you need to put in a car that costs $20,000, and uh, it's, uh, it introduces even safety aspect and many other elements, okay? Another aspect is that we play a game nowadays where survival is crucial. Now we have COVID-19, but even before COVID-19, this presentation date back four years ago, okay, there was General Motors, if you remember, 2008, 2009, the biggest company for many years in the world, the first car machine producer by size, revenues, employers, that was bank entering bankruptcy, bankruptcy, okay? And the federal government of the United States, federal was taking control of it, okay? So it's very competitive world we have to face. We have to face very dark scenarios, but even business is war, I mean, because we see now we have General Electric that along the last uh, few years, have lost a huge amount of value. Their share, they was getting down during Rank Welch period. It was increasing $400 billion value when he was CEO. Now I feel that he lost almost all this value and even more, okay? Another example about complexity, I would like to stress, is still related to artificial intelligence, is about self-driving cars, no? Many of you heard about self-driving cars, I feel. And uh, there was some kind of excitement a few years ago. This was dating on 2016, when there was the first uh, test by Tesla that was supposed to introduce it. I was in Stuttgart, where uh, there was the first, um, where is the headquarter of Mercedes? When they were in 95, when it was carried out such test of a car driving from München to Denmark. In reality, I remember that when I attended the presentation of this initiative in Stuttgart, the car was driving from Naples to Alborg in Denmark, so from Italy to Aarhus. But uh, this driving was almost, I feel, 80 or 90 percent made autonomously on highways driving 120 km per hour in a Mercedes van with three cameras or four cameras on the top that was tracking all the vehicle around. Simulation was used to predict the behavior of the other vehicles based on the tracking of their trajectory. And the driver was taking just control for a short period, 95, 25 years ago, okay? Uh, 96 Parma University was able to follow lane marks for 1,900 kilometers. I remember that was in San Diego when it was introduced at the part of the, let me say, I don't remember, it's an highway or interstate that goes from San Diego to the valley that had the possibility to, to direct automated cars 20, over 20 years ago. Uh, however, and there are many other examples. And I was recently in, um, in 2014 or 15, in, uh, still with Mercedes, when they demonstrate the capability of this car to self-park inside Mercedes parking, Mercedes, the, the parking of the Mercedes uh, headquarters, even with people around. And there was the driver that was driving, keeping his hand on the air, to show that it was not touching everything, the vehicle was driving and self-parking. 
not just self-parking, I mean. Uh, he was driving in the parking, finding for a park, and then go inside the slot. So much more than the simple self-parking capability. Um, so there is a huge capability, but we don't have yet to self-driving cars. No, We still have a big problem because something is to drive in an highway that was doing 80% safely in 95. Something is to drive inside the parking that he was doing mostly five years ago safely. Something is to drive inside the town with general traffic, with bicycle, with people, with people that drive in a crazy way is much different. Something to do as an experiment and something to do for millions and millions and millions of cars around. Let me say there was accident, several accidents that happened. It was the first casualty in 2016 by Tesla. But each day, almost each day, there is an accident by self-driven vehicle, like bus, etc. much more stupid, not a self-smart driving a bus around, but a bus maybe with a lane on the ground, the follow this lane, stop and the stop, so it's very basic. In any case, even this vehicle around the Europe, North America, Asia, etc., Africa, all the continent, the Americas, they have accident. Okay, few, but they have. Why? For the reason that I mentioned before. The control system that is, can be called an artificial intelligence, even if it's very basic sometimes, or not even in artificial intelligence, have different perception for us. So it could happen that while we get a better view with the fog, maybe just on condition of light or some drawing over a vehicle or some combination of color can confuse him to get the proper estimation of distance, proper estimation of a target, etc. Any case, 2016, there was Nutomi in Singapore that was demonstrating self-taxi service. Uber was carrying out experiment on that. There was new cars with self-driving capability, passed for a year, we still have out. But let's assume we make it work, because before or later, it will happen, okay? Will be not a big bang, probably. It will be slightly, slightly, as exactly with the web, uh, the smart working. We was able to do smart working 20 years ago, but we need uh, a big pandemic to decide to apply. But technology was there at least 15, 20 years ago, was demonstrated extensively 12, 10 years ago. It was investigated by many scientific analysis for 15 years. But this was the big turn on. But it was an increasing process, probably even here. But what happened when we turn on the self-driving? First of all, truck drivers go out. We in Italy, not in the world, in Italy, we have 900,000 truck drivers. We have 60 million of inhabitants and 24, around 24, 25 million of workers. One on 25 is a truck driver, truck or bus or... This guy will lose their job. And, and I will assume that 80% will have no any other chance to find a job because they don't have any qualification for other job or they will find very hard to find a job. Okay. In Italy, we have 900,000 truck drivers. In the world, we have 200,000 Uber drivers that will expect to to have to change. They are often students or people that move in another country, have an opportunity to get uh, some income, pretty good, that could lose. And around the world, we have 18 million of taxi drivers that are going to risk to lose their job, okay? So as you can see, it's not so easy. It's not an easy game. It's not just technology, it's even social problem. I'll give you another example. Okay, we were talking about pollution. Anna Bolognese, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. So, Anna, do you care about the environmental issue and yes. pollution, etc.? Uh, so, you know that uh, traffic of EV vehicle, like trucks, could have an impact on pollution. And by the way, have a huge impact on traffic and have even a significant impact on uh, casualty because uh, each year on our roads, we for just in Italy, we have 3,500 around people that die and several accidents are created by EV commercial vehicle, no? 
Are you aware, Anna? Uh, yes. So do you will like to reduce it? Sure. Now, there is an easy way to do that we can do in a few weeks. Let's say that in general, I was this, this I had this discussion of the stock exchange on Milan with top management of retail in the, the meeting. But the, the discussion with, with top retailer, but the audience was Confindustria, the National Italian Association of Industry. That was an example, you know. In Italy, obviously, the truck carry out many lorries. No, someone carries steel, someone carry tire, someone carry oil, etc. But as you can imagine, the majority of goods that we transport back and forward on wheels on truck are consumer goods. No because not maybe for weight, in terms of weight, but in terms of volume, in terms of track, you needed to bring mineral water, you need to bring all the food around, you needed to bring all the, the apparel for home. So this is a huge quantity, no, Anna? Uh, yes. Clothes, no, clothes. Uh, this is the, if you look around on the track, on the highway, you will see the majority is this one. Now, in the retail sector, 72% based on study by Stanford of the sale are uh, what we call um, emotional sales, okay? I don't know if it's a proper term in English, but means that uh, you enter in a place, you see something that you don't expect to buy and you buy. Normally, if you go, if it's a man, it's more than a woman, by the way. If you enter in a store, maybe you enter to buy, I need to buy milk and eggs. But then I ex exit with milk, eggs, cookies, some uh, kind of uh, cream, etc. Because I see it around and I buy, no? It is normally two at one in terms of ratio. So it means that 70%, 72, over 70% 70 of the sales are impulse, impulse sales, sorry. Is much better than emotional impulse sales. Now, the majority of sales happen due to promotion. I don't know if even you, Anna, when you go in the store, you buy, the, if there is something in promotion, no? Big sales, 30% out, 50% out, you are attracted by this sale. Are you attracted, Anna? Yes. Okay, very good. Normally, obviously, the, the big retailer do this uh, campaign like Black Friday. No, in, in Italy, we don't know what is Black Friday up to four or five years ago. Now there is just Black Friday that is not one day, but is last forever. I mean, any case, this, um, this big uh, reduction, this big promotion, don't make profit because you reduce the price on the item. So you don't get profit. You, you increase the sale, but you don't get additional profit. Okay. So you will ask me, do you, do you know why they do? Uh, because it, uh, it's uh, advertisement. Because it's advertisement, but even more because it's impulse sale. I told you that you will go there to buy a tire that is 50% off, but you will see a scarf that is very nice with this tire or a bag, and you will buy even this one. Okay. Yes. Maybe not too much for on the sale of a tire, but if we talk about promotion for a fan or for uh, a new uh, device for the phone, etc., it could work much more. No. And normally the ratio is two to one, so I don't make profit on this item, but I make profit on two other items. No? Then there is another aspect. So you say, but on this single item, I lose profit on a year. No. I don't lose profit. How can I keep the same profit on the iPhone if I make promotion on the iPhone for one month over one year? Well, How do you will do? You sell more, so even if uh, the... No, because it, it doesn't work, Anna, because if you sell more in promotion, let's assume for simplicity that you don't make profit. It's zero. So more doesn't change. Well, but if you uh, buy a phone, you also buy a char uh, charger. Yes, that, that, that's, but I want even to make the same profit on the iPhone over one year. I don't accept to reduce that. What I do, I increase slightly 
just a little bit the price when it's not in promotion, okay? So oh, regular okay, price then. was 1995. I make an example, it's not iPhone. Let's say it's a, some kind of cookie. It's 1995. So I make promotion for one month at 12, but on the rest of the days of the year that is not in promotion, I, I sell for 20, 99, okay? And so then the profit is the same. But what, what created this behavior? It creates peaks of sales in short period. So almost, uh, I feel two thirds of the sale, 50% of the sale goes in promotion, something like that. So what it means that if we make an agreement among all the retailers and we decide to stop a promotion, we all stop a promotion we will reduce the traffic on the highways for the part of retailers, probably of 10, 20%, okay? So we can do easily. We just make an agreement. You don't do promotion, yeah, I don't do promotion. Like with the nuclear weapon. I have nuclear weapon, you have nuclear weapon. You can do promotion, you can, I can do promotion. We don't do both, we keep peace. We don't do promotion, we keep low, and we reduce the, the pollution, but we don't do, because what will happen? We will reduce the world sales. We will need the less people in the store. We, we don't trust the other players. And so, as you can see, sometimes there are solutions, but they have other impact. It's not so easy to make it. And I don't talk about substituting old truck with new trucks that take years. I don't talk about, uh, burning new kind of fuel that should be compatible with the old engine or with the new engine. I say something that we can decide. If we decide at top level, we can implement it, let's say not in two weeks, let's say in three months, but in three months we can reduce EV track on the highways and in the town of 20%, but we don't do, okay? So sometimes we have to consider that even smart solution that we can find are not easy to implement, okay? Sometimes they can be implemented, no? There was a huge power crisis at the beginning of 2000. In Japan, the prime minister pushed to approve a law that forced people to don't put the tie in the office. Japan was very formal in office, like it was in Italy maybe 30, 40 years ago. All the employees in bank office have a tie and a jacket. But it was a power cost increasing a lot. Say, why we have to spend a lot in air conditioning to keep very low the temperature when we can simply put out our jacket, put our out tie, something that is very intuitive. It's not easy to do, by the way. Sometimes it's, it's up to authorities, sometimes it's up to companies, sometimes it's up to individuals. But when you identify a new solution, you have to consider this element. The art of winning competition, obviously, is based on the principle that we have seen many times in the art of war. Domini, I already mentioned for this definition of strategy as the art de bien diriger, the art of well directing your resource. And the art of war, that could be even mentioned in the, in the art of business, is composed by different branches, Jimini said, and invented someone. One is strategy. That is what we are dealing with. Then we have big tactics. Strategy is to define what you want to achieve and to direct your force to achieve it. The grand tactic is the high level of the specific decision that are compliant with the strategy to obtain major advantage. The, the tactics of detail are the small action that are carried out in order to support the grand technique that support the strategy. The logistic, the logistics in this case is all the support that you provide in terms of goods, material, raw, and even information for continuing to operate. A large design engineer, in such case, is a military genius, genie, is um, construction, construction, infrastructure, etc. If you think about us, even in business, you need infrastructure, you need to design, construct, install infrastructure, that could be your communication network, information system, your point of sales, etc. You need logistic, you need to feed of information material, power your entity. You need to take small operational 
decision at low level, you have to prepare. For instance, you have to prepare your clerk to fill up the shelf in the supermarket. You needed to have some manager in the, in the supermarket to coordinate that and manage locally the big tactics. And then you need to have the people on the id of such a network to define the strategy to win competition against the other one. Industrial competition is a game or is war. We already mentioned that one. You have to make calculation. You have to know in advance what will be the result. And so this is a very important aspect. OK, let me finish this uh, just uh, right over that, and I will be back. I don't know if you recognize this building, but if you have been often in New York City as myself, this is the headquarter, of, is the post office of New York City in Madison Square, OK? And this office is open 24 hours a day, 36, five days a year. At least it was when I was often there. On the front of this building, there is a motto. It was supposed to be the motto of postal service, US post, but in reality it's not the motto. But it says, Nature's no, nor rain, nor it, nor glow of the night, stay this courier from the shift completion of their appointment run. Okay. That is was something like to say there is no bad weather condition that could stop our post officer to deliver post. Okay. This was not uh, from uh, US Post, is a quote from Herodotus that he wrote down around 2,050, uh, 500 years ago. He was stating exactly this sentence, talking about Persian courier that was connecting the Persian in, in, uh, capital during the war in, uh, in Greece with the army that was operating in Greece. That was a huge distance, very huge distance. And they was going back and forward, using to substitute the horse at some point and transmitting information in order to be able to communicate over a distance that is unbelievable. To give you an idea of the corresponding complexity nowadays, if you make a proportion to the time to travel and the distance, if you look at this, uh, drawing where you can see the solar planet and this is the orbit of Pluto and this distance, okay, should be multiplied by three, is seven days to communicate by speed light. And you see this seven uh, shuttle over here, it should be 70,000 shuttles operating at three times this distance that is much more than the distance between Hart and Pluto's, okay? And it could cost 20,000 times more than the full gross world production at the actual cost, okay? So what I, I say by this uh, uh, academic game of science fiction applied to logistics and transportation, I would like to tell you that the complexity in the past was no easier than nowadays. To have an army of around 1 million Persian fighting in Greece at a distance that takes so much time to communicate, despite you use fires, use horses with the change, etc., was not more easy than nowadays to carry out operation in any place around the world. Okay? So you have always to consider the system are complex and has been always complex. You have new technology that enable you to do new things and you have new vulnerability, new problem, new risk, and a lot of new opportunity. Don't underestimate the previous case. Take inspiration because sometimes previous model about all technology can be readapted looking from a different point of view at this fact, okay? In our case, we'll use a lot of models and simulators. Simulator came from Ovidius metamorphosis. That means somebody that could simulate somebody else. There are many kinds of simulators. From Egyptian time, we have this kind of diorum that representing some kind of operation is a static simulation. But during Roman time, they was creating battles at sea simulated inside the Colosseum. 
there is, was a system of channel that was able to flood completely the Colosseum to have ships inside that was reproducing a naval battle, okay? And so can you imagine to do that 2,000 years ago? It's, it's relatively impressive. H.G. Wells, that maybe you heard about his famous book, like The War of Wars or The Time Machine, is one major writer of the two century ago, 150 years ago. He was inventing war gaming. He was taking the toy soldier of his child and he was using the toy soldier to reproduce real battles using dice. He was throwing the dice to calculate casualties. He was make, introducing, let me say, uh, equation that calculate mutual damage concurrently, not like a child, because a child normally when a soldier shoot another one, you ki I kill your soldier and then you shoot and you kill mine. But in reality, we shoot concurrently. It creates such rules that are still in use in modern war game on the computer. Here you have uh, this capsized structure of uh, ropes and sandbags. That is the capsizing of Gaudi Cathedral in Barcelona. And he was using that to calculate by this physical simulator the impact on the solicitation of the different arts because he don't have computer, obviously. And I don't know if you never see a structure of Gaudi, but um, the cathedral is a very crazy structure. And if you needed to solve, now I need to wait for five seconds. This one, okay, let's pass that five seconds to one, zero, bang. I don't know if I can see. Would like to show you very quick. If you consider this kind of structure that are even more than Gothic, it's very hard to calculate. Sometimes turn to be crazy around. And uh, he was uh, calculating this kind of structure using it is kind of physical simulation. Okay. Sorry, professor. This is the wrong cathedral. This is the cathedral of Barcelona, the one that you were showing. It's the Sagrada Familia, the one by Gaudi. Sagrada Familia, in fact. Exactly. And he was making such computation in this way, Oriol, in order to get an estimate of the effort. It was physical simulation. It was not a computer simulation. When we talk about simulation, it's always, com always computer simulation nowadays. But we still use physical simulation. Here we have, for instance, Ool and offshore platform are simulated in pool with water by hydraulic equivalence that is not correct 100% because there is some scale effect and you cannot make it equivalent to something that is making scale, but can help you to get good results. The same for dams. Even in cars, we still have a test that are carrying out crashing cars. But if you use computer simulation, you can reduce the number of cars that you have to crash. The, there is still a very crucial physical simulation that until now we cannot substitute is that one of extravehicular operation in space because we don't have capability yet to simulate absence of gravity wearing a space suit. We can simulate absence of gravity in plane, but is not useful in terms of operation of time and equipment that you need. So astronauts work in pools with weight that balance and simulate absence of weight to carry out operation. Obviously, it's not equal to be in the space because the water has some kind of viscosity that space don't have. But it's very good, interesting way. By the way, on the lower picture, there's me with John and Suzette McLeod, that is the father of simulation at his 50 year of the first Congress on simulation. He was introducing simulation much before, but in 53, he was introducing that and simulation at that time, even early, was running not on digital computer, but on analog computer, okay? So if we take a break over here, and we'll continue after the break, let's say that we'll start back at 17, okay? Any question before to stop? Anybody survived this long? Uh,
Bye bye. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, Martin. Professor, for the effort. It was a great effort. Thank, thank you, you so much, sir. In the second part, we start to to face a real problem, so it will be a little bit. Uh, it may be boring, I hope, and uh, it's more interactive because the final goal of this exam and the exam itself will be based on facing, providing you a problem and asking you how to model, how to analyze, how to improve, how to improve security, how to improve efficiency, how to improve effectiveness and so on, and the, the proper way to address by strategic engineering approach. Yes, Azad. Thank you, Reyane. We take a break.